Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and welcome to episode 111 of the Knife Guy. If you're new to my channel or just came out of some weird corner of the internet and you have no idea where you are or who I am, I am a knife guy, knife user, knife collector, knife enjoyer of many sorts. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming, you know, all of you are in some way knife guys or knife gals in this super weird and crazy EDC and knife related world. We all go down our own unique paths, but oftentimes those paths intersect and we experience a lot of the same stuff. What I like to do is pick up knives that are either mine or some of my generous viewers. In this case, all of these are mine. I like to flip them out and just sort of give you guys something to look at or listen to on this hopefully uh, beautiful Sunday morning, evening, or afternoon. I like to cover these shared, usually shared things. So first off, you guys probably can see my new uh, mat here. And uh, uh, this is not going to be the background from now on. I just wanted to use it and show it off. This will be the mat that I use for uh, disassembly videos. Where did I get it? It was made by at Lancelot Leather. Very recommendable. This is ridiculously high quality. He did an excellent job. Um, so I, you know, if you're looking for something like this, like a tinker or a disassembly mat, um, this is perfect. It's just the right size. Um, and, uh, highly recommended. So yeah, give him a follow, check him out for sure. I'm realizing that this is kind of a cool background. I'm considering <laughs> having him make me another one that's like really big and it's just leather with no logo. I feel the logo is cool and it'll work for disassembly stuff, but I feel like if I use it for reviews, it, the logo and everything might be distracting. Maybe not. I'm not really sure. Uh, you guys let me know what you think. Do you want to see this in the background of reviews or should it just be a periodic thing that I use for disassemblies? Either way, I love the mat and you can expect to see it in at least some videos. Um, but anyways, so I have, um, some of my craziest stuff laid out here today. Some of this stuff is kind of hard to get. Some of it's not that bad. Some of it's next to impossible. Um, and this is all stuff that I've chased down. You know, some of the interest that's been built on it is because it's hard to get. A lot of the hinderer stuff was much easier to get when I started. XM24s have always been kind of weird and especially variants like the full titanium like that's not that's not something you can go up i mean the first time that they made 24 ti full thickness titanium scales in like eight years was just recently and i fortunately got my hands on one the dark horse is weird because it's black stone washed which is not a finish they do they do black washed which is different than this or battle black which is different than this and then do uh like black dlc which is also different than this I'm not sure if they're going to continue that. Other knives like the 8020, uh, the uh, 05, or I'm sorry, the ZT0392, the Microtech, so uh, Microtech SOCOM Elite, um, the um, Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon, right? Those are all kind of difficult to get. The um, the Scarab, absolutely. Uh, the Scarab 2, the um, the uh, Hellhound Combat Troodon, right? The Shirograf Quantum, the River's Edge Cullery <laughs> Shaman, which I've outfitted with... Titanium scales from Flytanium that were sent off to River's Edge Cutlery to be Cerakoted black. Um, that's also kind of a weird one. And then knives that are available but just ridiculously expensive like um, the Rockstead Higo 2. Um, so these are, it's, it's, the reason for chasing them down was, oh, number one, I liked how they looked. And number two, it's kind of fun because they're relatively hard to get. And it's, it's kind of, I enjoy the chase, right? That's kind of why I chase this stuff down. There's always links down in the description for retailers where you can pick a lot of this stuff up at some point. You just have to sign up for notifications. But that's the fun of it, is hunting stuff down. Um, I talked about my checklist, going down my checklist, and there are definitely knives on my checklist that are just more or less available, or they're just really expensive and I haven't budgeted for them, right? But there's nothing that's like actively ready to go where I can just where, where I can absolutely zero in on my next purchase and know absolutely that that's what I want right then and there. The reason for this video is because my custom um, is finally being completed. And I've been hinting at that for a long time. Um, it's taken a, about, honestly, overall, less, way less time than I thought. Like my maximum, I thought I'd be waiting six months and it's nowhere near that. So that's coming. And rest assured, that will absolutely be the most expensive knife that I own. Way beyond the, um, the Higo 2. Way beyond. I'm very excited to share that with you guys. 
my taste is not evolving to, uh, not permanently evolving to that mega upper territory. I think it's interesting, but I simply cannot afford to explore that all the time, nor do I really want to, because truthfully, there's not a lot of stuff, save for five, maybe 10 different models up there that are interesting to me. A lot of it is with the Hawk Brothers uh, or with Brian Nadeau, right? But outside of that, I'm not like, oh, wow, there's all this stuff that's multiple thousands of dollars that I want. No, not really. A lot of what I want is still in this, still in this general territory, right? We're talking anywhere from 400 bucks up to about a thousand. But the problem is, is that I don't know exactly where to go. <laughs> I don't know where to go at this point, and I, but I know that there's going to be a next thing. Like, here's the thing: am I gonna eventually? Am I gonna try to grab more 8020s? Yes, but probably not another 8020 in this size. I want a smaller one. I'd love to have a full titanium, smaller, not like the 8020.5. I mean, like an actual 8020 that's full tie and it's got the shark's foot on it because I love my little guy, this guy right here. I love this. I love the size of it. Right. But I'd, I'd love one that's, you know, kind of tanky like this and full titanium. Um, it's That's just smaller. But I, I just want that shark's foot blade. So, you know, something like that. I'm definitely going to pick up more hinderers at some point. I just, I still need to find uh, a hinderer that's going to fit. Uh, where is it? Yeah. I still have this scale. <laughs> I still have my original XM18 three and a half inch t textured titanium scale that's unmilled. It's very old. It's so old it doesn't even have the logo on it. Yes, it's real. It's confirmed that it's real. Um, but it's from a long time ago. But from when they didn't, they, you know, they weren't uh, putting that logo on there. And I gotta find an XM18 three and a half inch that I want to keep in my collection for that scale. So that's definitely part of the hunt. But there will be a next thing that I zero in. My most recent thing, my most recent obsession was the 80-20 thing. And I mean, like, I liked it so much that I definitely, I knew that I would get multiple, right? I did my Microtech OTF thing, and I've kind of got the ones that I want to keep. I did my Shurogorov thing, which by the way, if you guys are wondering, where's the, the uh, F95, uh, uh, or the, the F3, um, that you purchased that actually had to go back for sharpening the apex was a little bit boogery so that went back to recon and ultimately back to shirogorov for sharpening um but no big deal that happens every now and then even with shirogorov right it's fine no big deal recon one was really good about it um but uh yeah so there might be another shirogorov that i'm interested in at some point um none of the other models are screaming to me right now but i i feel like I'm at this point now, and I and I know the reason that, you know, the idea with this series is to make it relatable. The reason I'm talking about this is because I know that a lot of you probably feel this way, whether you've been here for a long time, and, the you know, the knife market is just like everything that everybody wants right now is just not available. I'm still, I, I, I'm still holding out for the catch-up point. I know at some point it's like there's going to be a replenishment. People who are big into spider crow knives right now are like, what the heck? Where are all the shamans, right? Where are all these models that we really want? Yeah, I know. I, I still feel like we're going to see, you know, things slowly start to catch back up. Um, but, or whether you've been here for a while and there's just stuff that you want, you know, that everybody wants that it's just not available, or you've been, you're just now starting out and you're, you know, you might just be at this point where you're like, I'm waiting. I don't want to do that thing where I just am like, well, I've got some money to spend. I guess I'll just find whatever is the most interesting to me right now and then go for that, right? This is absolutely something we've talked about before. It's, I mean, what next? What's the next thing? There will be a next thing. There's always a next thing that takes the knife world by storm and then all the reviewers and all the people in the knife community on Instagram and on the forums and on YouTube and wherever, Discord, right? Everybody just goes freaking nuts for it. Um, I don't know what it is, but in order, the, the thing that I want to point out here is that every next thing has to have some exponentially interesting element, right? The reason that there was such a, and, and there, there's going to be people going, yeah, I didn't really get into the hype of the 8020. Right, that's fine, but it still happened. <laughs> With or without everybody's thumbs up, it still happened. It still was like a everybody just freaked out. Not everybody, but a large 
percentage of the knife community freaked out about this thing because it added elements of strength and fidget factor and then happened to fall onto a uh, platform that was very aesthetically pleasing for a lot of people, right? This was right up my alley, absolutely. The one nitpick I have with it is the pocket clip is meh, it's a B minus, right? Not that big of a deal. But that was the thing. So the next thing will not just be a, wow, another, you know, the, the next thing is not going to be a titanium frame lock on bearings that has a flipper tab. There'll be another model that's like that and people will be like, wow, neat. And it'll be neat for like a week or a month and then people will forget about it. The 8020 and the future of that thing is bright and it'll be around for a while. It'll be popular for a while, right? And we're stuck. We're, I'm already talking about the next thing, right? As a spoiled knife collector. When we already have new things, there's lots of stuff out there to buy. And keep in mind, guys, what I'm saying, I'm not saying that there's nothing to buy right now, that there's nothing to explore. Um, I'm just saying, like, as far as, for me, like, where I am in the knife world in my collection, there's nothing that's screaming so loudly at me that I'm like, I have to have that right now. Truthfully, the Rockstead really wasn't screaming at me that loudly. I just really, I liked it. I was like, eh. you know, if my, my emotional level was at like an A minus. I was like, that's really cool. I'd like to own that. Got an opportunity, right? We're talking about A plus desire. Demco 80 20.5 was the last thing to do that to me. And before that, you know, maybe there were like the XM24 build I was trying to complete. This guy was definitely screaming at me. I can see my next major desirable thing being, and I've talked with Brian Nadeau about this. Very recently, I said, I think I do want an arch nemesis, but it's going to be a while and I got to figure it out. And I kind of talked to them about, you know, pricing and, and it was about what I expected. I, you know, and that had just said that like my preferences are probably not going to lie in the multi thousand dollar department. But since we brought up Sharp by Design, yeah, that's definitely on my radar, but I can't. I can't just fork over to, it's going to take a little bit. I got a budget for that and I'm probably going to have to sell stuff, right? Um, but yeah, that's definitely there. But I'm I'm just curious about the net. We've talked about the next big thing before. I just, I, I know that the next, the really the next thing will not just be a model that's sporting the same locking mechanism, the same material, well, it'll partially be the same materials, but there's going to be a weird shift at some point, right? We're already starting to see things like blade materials that are not actually steel. Knives that run on magnets, like the one that Nick Shabazz had, right? <laughs> Carbon fiber, titanium, and M390 have been a major cornerstones in the knife world for so long. But that stuff is going to become not obsolete, but just less... You know, titanium I can see being around for a long time, right? But just as 440C steel was yesteryear's M390, you know, M390 today will eventually be, yeah, that was once a really great steel and now it's like ho-hum, whatever, you can get it for 50 bucks, right? Heat treated well. Not right now, but at some point in the future, yeah, I can see that happening, right? What evolution is this, are we going to see? <laughs> I don't know, but it's exciting. I have a feeling OTFs are going to evolve in a weird way. I've been saying that for a while, right? Uh, I think uh, it won't surprise me if Spyderco comes out with some super weird uh, new ambidextrous lock. I really like looking at, at uh, Spyderco's other stuff, right? The compression lock is so popular and it's it's going to remain to be popular for you know a long time, but it won't surprise me if Spyderco comes out with something weird like that. I think ambidextrous locks are absolutely a huge part of the knife world and being creative with that stuff and avoiding Omega Springs will likely be, you know, something that knife manufacturers are trying to mess around with. Um, I think uh, there's been enough, you know, people like uh, Omega Springs are, they're fine, but you know, we hear about more failures than anything else. And truthfully, you know, even when you're hearing about Omega Spring failures, it's less than 1% of the knives that are out there. So don't fear them. Just saying, in order for, you know, these knife companies, they, they, they want to make an ambidextrous lock so that they can, you know, get that, the, the lefties, the other 10%, right? They want to do that. Everybody gets excited because whether you're right or left-handed, you can manipulate the knife both ways. That's what I love about the 8020, right? 
is that if I'm using it with my right hand and then for whatever reason I want to stabilize whatever I'm working with with my dominant hand, then I can manipulate the knife with my left hand just about as, as easily, right? No problem. I really think that that's going to be a major part. OTFs don't really have that issue right now, but it won't surprise me if we see OTFs evolve in some weird way. I, I honestly think that Guardian Tactical and what they're doing with the, with the uh, bearings and the, the steel plate, uh, it, that, that Guardian Tactical Recon 35 and Recon 40 are, in my opinion, outside of the deadlock from the Hawk Brothers, the most, that's the most impressive OTF that's out there right now. I mean, that, I, I'll probably own that at some point because I'm, truthfully, I'm more impressed with that knife overall than either of my ultra high-end uh, Microtechs. So I'm wondering if Microtech is going to evolve in some weird way, not just be, not because I'm saying it, because you hear so many people going, oh my gosh, the, you know, it's such an amazing deal, right? Zero tolerance, I sure hope, evolves in some way. Because I'm, I'm just, you know, some of their newer models were okay. The 0308's cool, but I mean, geez, like, there, there needs to be some, in my opinion, from, for me to like really gather interest back in that brand, I really want to see some major evolutionary step in not just how their models in general, but like how they, you know, the designs, like the locking system, they're all frame locks and all that. I think what I'm saying here is I really, I'm ready to break away from the whole titanium frame lock thing, even though I'm still totally willing to buy titanium frame locks like hinderers, right? But would I like to see Rick Hinderer come out with an ambidextrous? Rick Hinderer is doing some new stuff. If you haven't heard about the Hinderer Auto, that's coming, and that's very cool. That's the type of stuff that I like to see is, right, they're doing so well. Rick Hinderer is doing so well that he really doesn't have to keep pushing the envelope. He's just like, here's more XM18s, and everyone's like, ah, you know, and me included. He doesn't have to, but he's going to go ahead. He's going to go ahead and make new stuff. An automatic isn't a new knife, but it's new for his line, right? It's different. And I can guarantee he'll come out with some weird, innovative stuff because he's always doing that. Triway pivot system, the tool in the back of the half track, right? Stuff like that. It's all, he's always, always doing new things. I want, I want to see this stuff, but I want it to go in a million different directions, right? I don't like seeing one trend and then it's everybody's just like, because that's what happened with titanium frame locks. Now we have way too many. I'm excited for the next thing. I really want to zero in on it, lock in on it, and explore it, right? Go down that path. Find all the different combinations of stuff, blade shape, the appearance, the finish on the blade, the materials, right? Between the blade and the scales. I also want to see, uh, I've been saying this for, I think, a year now. I want to see integral knives become fully, like, integrated into many brands. I want to see, I mean, like, we've seen integral knives from overseas manufacturers get less and less and less expensive. You can still expect to pay about 400-ish dollars for a decent integral knife. Riyadh, I think, is the best brand, right? I'm referencing, like, the Jack, 400 to 450 bucks. It's able to be done. I think the price of an integral knife will probably come down, and you're going to see it in overseas manufacturers first. If you want an American integral it's probably going to cost more money. Though, I will point out, the least expensive American integral knife that I think I've ever seen, when it's been around for a while, the Microtech or uh, Marfione, and it was a custom. I mean, eh, custom. That heavy machine, you know, uh, involved custom, right? The MSG3, not the most impressive action I've ever seen, Right? But it was an integral titanium knife, and I think the base price of it was about 700 bucks. It's a lot of money, but not as much as we normally see. I'd really like to see that. I also really like, there's another example of something that I think is interesting. Um, what Elisha Isham is doing, or Isham. This is not an integral knife, but look how he did this. These interesting, I'm not saying like all of this is my cup of tea, but this area back here is super cool. This is, it's technically, it's not the backspacer, it's part of the frame. But look how it's integrated, right? It's still a frame lock, but stuff like this is really, really interesting. I like that. Does it make it more durable? Uh, does it add, you know, does it give you a tactical advantage? No, <laughs> but it's interesting. It's more interesting than, you know. Look, this is done. The titanium frame lock, this is done. And this came out, when did this knife come out? The 0392? 
this uh, black and bronze one. This was like, what was that? 2013, 2014, right? It's a lot of brand new frame locks that look exactly, I mean, that function exactly the same way with the exact same action. It's just still like people, and I can understand why people like them, but I'm just, I'm still gonna enjoy stuff like that, but I'm ready to, I'm ready to see something new. I'm ready to be excited, to be truly excited about something different. This, this knife really sparked like the, oh good, the knife world is stu still doing weird things. And we're not just like, well, I guess we'll just make a bajillion more frame locks, hope everybody likes them. Yeah, well, you could do that, but stuff like this, right, that put them on the map. Not the Demco knives weren't already on the map, but geez. <laughs> They were like, here's the shark lock, and people were like, holy crap, we've never seen that before, right? Now you can't get this or the 8020.5. And that would have happened with or without my help. They didn't, I know a lot of people will say, well, it's because you talked about it and blew it up so much. Nah, that would have been popular either way. Let's be real. I had I had very little to do with that. That was <laughs> that was gonna be popular either way, right? There was a million other uh, YouTubers out there talking about it, a million other, uh, you know, people on Instagram talking about it anyway, right? It would have spread all over the place. I hope this was entertaining. It's fun to do stuff like this. It's fun to chat about it. I want to hear what you guys, you know, think will be the next major innovation or you think it like partial innovations that have been not explored properly. Maybe there are even stuff that's been around for a bit that... You know, maybe it was a bit ahead of its time when it came out and nobody really latched onto it. Stuff you'd like to see come back, right? Um, I think that'd be cool. I sure hope knife laws uh, get a little more lenient. I think that's, you know, that's wishful thinking, but I, th I, I would like to see that so we can see more stuff, right? Legalities in the United States and all over the world certainly restrict or de-incentivize the production of certain types of products, that would otherwise be available to all more of us, right? So that'd be it'd be neat to see. Um, anyways, I think that's all that I really um, need to talk about today. I don't need to get my card out. I can just let you guys know right here to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.